Super Mario Kart. What a beautiful looking game and the first Mario Kart ever. The beginning of a legendary video gaming franchise. It's only one problem. It's 2D. About one year ago, I recreated Super Mario Bros. 3 and the original Metroid in a 3D style called voxel art, which is basically just pixel art, but in 3D. And next on my list is Super Mario Kart. And even though Nintendo has released so many sequels to keep up with, I still feel the need to remaster the first Mario Kart game into a new modern 3D version. So first thing first, as always, I started with a completely new unit project, added a big old cube, and now we have round. I decided right away that I want something visual for the car, so I jumped into Magica Voxel and created the car. I did the wheels separately to be able to spin them later, imported them into Unity, and there we have it, car. I added the wheels as well, so it actually looks like it can drive, maybe not with those wheels. I was looking at two different approaches on the car movement. The first one I found a tutorial by Games Plus James on how to use a sphere collider as the movable object and the car wheels just follow along with no wheel physics or wheel colliders at all. I also tried implementing the movement with wheel colliders but the first approach was way simpler so I ended up just using that one since it also felt a little more arcadey and that's the feel I want to go with this. Thanks Games Plus James, great tutorial. But before I can move on, I still need the wheels to rotate and I did run into a small pivot issue here, as you can see, but luckily this is a very very easy fix. And with the car functioning and working as it should, I also added the ability to drift and do this small little jump. You know, the small little hop you do when you push the right trigger. Time to add something more fun to drive on. Found this image of the first map and I smacked it on top of my cube and it's a little small. So I scaled it up to make it feel like it should and yeah, that's literally it. For the track pieces, I started by making small pieces in Magic of Oxel and then stitched them together in Unity. But this felt like it would take too much time and it would not be a very good solution. So I tried another approach and that was to cut out the track and then drag the whole thing into Magic of Oxel. But that was a mistake. The biggest size in Magic of Oxel is 256 times 256. So finally, I ended up just slicing the track into chunks, and then I could put those pieces together in Unity. And this also felt like the quickest way to do it. We also have some props on the map, like these colored blocks. There's yellow, red, green and blue. And with those in place, we now have the track, the color boxes, and I also added the sand part of the level. Great, we now have a racing track to play around in. Next up was the item box. In the original game, there is just a sprite on the ground. Since this is a 3D game, I bumped it up a notch and make it into a block instead. A spinny block. With all of them in place, I'm glad I did. I used the same approach with the coins. I made them spin above the ground, like this. With the basics of the map done, it was time to add some life to the world. And with life, I mean completely dead characters. There are 8 playable characters in this game, and the modeling usually takes me the longest, so I really need to start if I want this video to be done by the end of this year. I started with Mario, and it actually did not take as long as I was expected. Maybe I'm uh, getting better at this modeling thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, lo it looks fine, okay? And let's just say some of these took longer than others. Yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Eventually, all the characters were done. And here we have Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, Koopa, Bowser. Now I can add a character to my car and start with the items. There are 9 items in the game, minus the ghost, since that is only used in party mode. So I got started with the first item, the green shell. Um, It's not supposed to do that. And with the green shell finished, I realized that I want something to shoot on. So before continuing with the rest of the item, I decided I need some bots. And what better to shoot on than a bunch of stupid bots. So let's make these characters be able to drive, and for that we need an AI for the computer playing cars. Yeah, let's see how this goes. Just create an AI car handler, get the car controller, call the move function from the fixed update, and also the ground normal rotation function to keep the car flat on the ground. And there we have it, a 21st century AI. Hey Elon, maybe I can get a job working on the autopilot on Tesla. Oh, I made some improvements so it actually can turn and also created these targets for the AI to drive towards. So basically, when it drives past one of them, just increment to the next target in the list and move towards that new target instead. So it looks like this. 
It's a little wonky, but at least I got an AI driving around the track. Then I tried adding two more bots and looked really bad since all the bots are moving towards the same target all the time. So to fix this, I added three target points on all the targets and made the bot get a random point from those three points at each target. And I also applied different speeds for the bots. And that's it. This might be the worst car AI someone has ever done, but it works and it's kind of convincing. Now that we have working bots, I can get back to the items. And before anything else, I want the item shuffle thing to work. And here I simply just create an animation for the items and the last item will be the item in the box. Super simple. So I decided to try and fix the simplest items first. And the first up is the mushroom. Just increase the speed for a short period of time when used. The same with the feather item, just make a bigger jump when used. The next simple one is the coin. Just instantiate the same coin that I have already done for the tracks and apply the player position and increase the collected coin value. For the red shell, I just calculate the closest bot and then it follows the target until it goes into the wall or hit the enemy. And if it does hit an enemy, I have created this little spin animation. When you get hit and this animation is played, you can't steer the car and you also lose a little bit of speed. The same applies for the banana. You run over it and you will do this little spin. And also the banana you can both put behind you and also do this little throw. It's a little bit slow, but it works for now. Then we have the lightning item. For this, I added a big image to cover all of the screen. Then I start an animation that changes color like this. Decrease the speed of all the bots and at the same time scale them down. And with all that, it looks like this. The final item is the star. When you use the star, you can't get hit by other items. I am invincible! Invincible! You Ow! And if you drive into another player, it will do this little spin animation. You also increase the max speed and change the material. And here I couldn't find the correct colors for the material, so I just did a little sneak fix and made multiple materials with different colors that I just randomly picked and changed them on a counter. And that is all the items fixed. Time to do some cleaning of the map and add the small details. And the first is these pipes that is placed around the track as obstacles. They're not shown on the 2D map I downloaded, so I had to look at the original game and place them where it felt correct. The background is also a little bland, so I tried to add these little hills and trees. And my solution for this is just to add a giant quad at the end of the world plane and apply the texture on it. Looks a little scuffed, but it works alright. I also added some particles when drifting and driving on the sand. It looks like this. I actually did not like this and liked it a lot better without the dust particles. So I'll just remove them for the time being. Now all I need is the function to actually make it into a racing game. And that is the lap counter, lap time and placement. And also this legendary dude called Lakitu. You know, the one that comes down on a cloud with the traffic lights on the fishing rod. Yeah, just imagine. And for Lakitu, I have a little floating animation. And then when the race is about to start, I change the material on the traffic lights after a few seconds. And when the green light is shown, you can start the race. To show the rest, like the timer and the placement, I have to create some UI. I started with the timer, I could not find a good font for this, so I tried to use this one that I had. It looks pretty okay, it's not pixel art, but it works. Then I also added this small little animation for the ranking system. So with that in place, it was time to figure out how to implement a ranking system. I did some research how to go about this and I found a pretty simple solution. Just check which of the checkpoints is crossed and compare that to the rest of the cars. So for example, if I cross three checkpoints and the car at the second place have only crossed two checkpoints, then I know that my car is in front of the second car. So if I want this to be a little more accurate, I could just add more checkpoints so that I would have checkpoints every other meter or so. Having them like this works for me and this game. And that is actually all I did for this little project. I had planned to make the whole first cup, but I wanted to get this video out this year. So if you liked it and would like me to do more stuff like this, please consider leaving a like or dislike and subscribe. So yeah, cheers.